Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jasmine and today I'm going to be showing you how to properly store your produce. So it is Earth Month and with that, Chris and I were extra inspired to try and make changes in our life to waste less and do better for our planet. And um, one of the areas that we wanted to tackle was our food waste. So I've noticed that our produce tends to go bad quickly and it's not that we're over purchasing the food, it's just not lasting as long as we would have liked it to. So I went online and I tried to figure out ways to combat this and ways to make changes in order to preserve our produce. And I started seeing all these awesome tips and tricks on how to properly store your produce, keep things fresher longer, and to reduce your waste. So today I'm compiling all of those into a video for you, hopefully to help you waste less in your household, to inspire you to make these changes, and um, I guess for your enjoyment as well. So let's get started. So I feel like onions and potatoes are pretty much staples in most households. Um, but the number one thing you want to make sure you don't do is store these next to each other. So onions actually produce an ethylene gas, which will cause the potatoes to spoil faster. And so what you want to do is try to keep these far away from one another um, so that you prevent that from happening. So I have my potatoes in this bowl and it is ideal to keep them in a cool and dark area. So we have them away from the window, which is on the other side of our kitchen and, and this room in general. Um, if you have a dark bag or a paper bag to store it in, that's even better. You can even put it in a cabinet or a drawer. But we like to keep it on our countertop because we are notorious for forgetting what we actually have stocked. And if I put it in a drawer or a cabinet, I'll probably forget it. So I like to just keep these in the corner um, that's where I started putting them and then I have my other produce right here I have my other produce away from the potatoes and I actually have my onion right here and keep it pretty far from the potatoes and again it's good to keep it in a cool and dark place you can also put that in a drawer or a pantry or a cabinet but this is just the best for us um, in terms of making sure that we use up our produce tomatoes tomatoes uh, if you guys watch uh, Queer Eye, you probably saw the tomato little skit they had at the end. Um, but basically, you're supposed to store tomatoes on the counter at room temperature. Do not put them in the fridge. Um, and you will see a difference definitely in the flavor of the tomatoes as well. So store them on your countertop. And then also garlic. So I keep our garlic in a wide bowl. If you buy garlic in a bag, it's best to remove them from the bag and put them in a bowl and just store them on the counter, not in the fridge. Same goes with potatoes. If they come in a plastic bag, it's best to take them out of that bag as well. So some fruits do best in the refrigerator while some do best on the counter. I'll have a list on our blog post I'll link down below. Um, but mango is a fruit that you keep on the counter as well as bananas and I have plantains here as well because as they sit on the counter, they'll continue to ripen um, as opposed to other fruits like apples and citrus. As they sit on the counter, they actually begin to deteriorate. So those we actually keep in the fridge. I'll talk more about that when I shift over there. Um, but yeah, this is our current produce section on our counter. <laughs> this isn't necessarily a produce storage hack, but this is pertaining to produce, so I decided to throw it into the video. I've mentioned this before, but we like to make our own vegetable broth at home. It's actually super easy to do. And the way that we make it is by actually collecting vegetable scraps. So we have onion skins, garlic skins, um, the tops of carrots, the bottoms of celery, and little bits and pieces of things that we weren't able to use up, but we wanted to still uh, put them to good use. And so when this bag fills up, I pop this on the stove top with some water and I bring it to a boil. You can add any seasonings of choice. You can add more vegetables if you want to make it more flavorful. You can even add bay leaves. And then you'll boil it down. You strain it, squeeze out all of the juice, um, and then you'll have yourself some vegetable broth. So I have a whole blog post on this and I actually have a video on it as well. So I'll link the video in the top, uh, so I'll link the video in the top right corner and I'll also link the blog post down below, which goes into a little more detail. Um, and hopefully you guys can make some vegetable broth at home. So fresh herbs are notorious for wilting in the refrigerator. And the best thing that you can do to preserve them, keep them fresh, keep them happy, is to actually store them as you would flowers. So we transfer our herbs to small cups, fill it with water, 
and then we pop this into our refrigerator and it lasts longer, it stays fresh, and you'll notice a huge difference. We actually put these on the top shelf just because that is the tallest for us. You can definitely adjust your shelves as necessary if you have taller objects in your refrigerator. I'm a little too lazy for that, so these just go right on top. The only one that I recommend not putting in the refrigerator is actually basil. So we stored our basil in the refrigerator for the longest time and it would always go black and so I would always try to just use our basil as soon as possible um, but I ended up losing a lot of basil, wasting a lot of basil. So then I looked up how to actually properly store basil and it's actually better at room temperature and it thrives in a cup with water like the other herbs as well. So we keep this in indirect light in the kitchen on our little windowsill. If you can get your hands on a basil plant, that is even better and your basil will be so much fresher that way. We've killed multiple basil plants so maybe someday we'll have some success there but for now this is working just fine. Avocado, a beautiful and very finicky fruit. Um, it could be super ripe and then the next day just be done, destroyed, and black and just not ideal. Um, so actually what you can do is you can store these on your countertop until they ripen and you'll know that they're ripe when the top just pops off of it and of course they're soft. Um, so once they ripen just pop them into the refrigerator that'll halt the ripening process and then you can just pull the avocados out of there as necessary. They're not gonna last too long in there, um, but it'll definitely help with you being able to eat them and not wasting them. Another thing is if you get a bunch of avocados, like if you get a bag at Trader Joe's or Whole Foods, you can put some of the avocados in the fridge when they're still hard and keep some on the countertop. So the ones on the countertop will ripen and the ones in the fridge, it will halt the ripening process so they'll stay pretty hard. And once you're ready, to use more avocados, then you can transfer them out of the refrigerator onto your countertop and just let them ripen. So this is actually in our fridge tour video, um, but storing asparagus is the same thing as the herbs. Um, except for this one, I recommend cutting a little bit off of the ends of the asparagus and then just putting it into a cup of water and it will last a lot longer in the fridge. You can also wrap it in a plastic bag, but we try not to use plastic bags, so I just keep it as is. Um, and you can put it inside of the refrigerator as well, but ours is a little tall, so we just keep it on the door because we have room there. Almond milk. So we have actually homemade almond milk, and this one's a store-bought. And it is ideal to keep this inside of the refrigerator, especially if you're making homemade almond milk because it's way more sensitive. Um, because if you keep it on the door, when you're constantly opening and closing your refrigerator, the temperature fluctuates the most on the door, um, so this won't keep as fresh as it would within the body of the refrigerator, which is colder. So I just like to put it on the middle shelf um, and it lasts longer and yeah, you're good to go. Nuts and seeds are actually ideal in a cool and dark place. So we keep these in the refrigerator um, because it is cool and of course when we close it, it's dark in there. If you don't have room in your refrigerator, you can definitely put these into the pantry. Just keep in mind that they won't last as long as they would in the refrigerator. And the reason why you want to keep them in a cool and dark place is because in a warm and bright place they actually can go rancid faster. Um, so this just keeps them fresh. And also just keep in mind, nuts don't last forever. If you've had nuts for over a year, um, you may want to check the expiration date on them or just do a quick Google search to make sure they're still okay. I actually learned this tip, I think it was from Pickup Limes here on YouTube. And if you... Oh, there's a song that our fridge plays. If you cut up your celery and your carrots and actually put them in jars full of water, they will stay fresher and crispier longer. Okay, that was weird. Um, so yeah, you just keep them in water and then you can just remove the carrots and the celery as you need or just drain the whole thing when you're ready to eat them. This is a really, really great tip, especially if you want to meal prep for the week and cut your celery and carrots but you don't want them to dry out. Now moving on to the drawers. Another tip for your crisper drawers in your fridge is you can actually line them with towels or paper towels. Um, I've even seen people do newspaper, but I prefer just using regular um, kitchen towels and that will absorb any excess moisture and help prevent the drawer from just getting gross. And you can just regularly clean out the drawer, clean the towel, or replace it with a new one and you'll be good to go. So I buy cucumbers 
quite often. I like to use them for smoothies and juices mostly, and sometimes I put them in my salads. But the problem I was facing is I would have one in the fridge and it would just turn really slimy and just go bad so fast. Um, so I went online, I tried to figure out the best way to store cucumbers, and I actually learned that if you wrap your cucumber in towels, it recommended paper towels, but I'm trying not to use paper towels here, so I'm just using a regular kitchen towel, and then put them in a plastic bag, which I'm using a reusable bag, um, this is from Stasher Bag, and just put the cucumbers in there, and then just take them out as you need, then it will stay fresher longer. The only thing with this, it's only for whole cucumbers. If you cut your cucumbers, it's a whole different story, um, but I try to use the whole cucumber at once. Like I mentioned before, I like to use these for juices and smoothies mostly, so I usually end up using the whole thing. Greens, so this doesn't look like greens, but if you unravel this baby, got some kale in here. And um, I actually learned this from Chris because his mom does this. But when you get home, remove the greens from their bags. We buy them in bulk so they don't really, they don't usually come in a bag. And we rinse out our greens. You can remove the stems there, but we like to keep them on because it gets a little messy if you remove the stems. Put them onto a towel and let that towel and the greens dry. And then just roll it all up in the towel and stick it in the fridge like this. This will absorb excess moisture, it'll keep it fresh longer. When you keep them in the sealed plastic bags and plastic containers, they are more susceptible to rotting and that's actually how your greens start to turn slimy because there's too much moisture that builds up in there. So with the towel, it actually will absorb the excess moisture and prevent that from happening. If you buy greens in a bag or in a plastic container, um, you can do the same thing or what you can do is just make sure to puncture holes in the container or in the bag Better yet, remove the greens from the plastic container and line it with a paper towel or a regular towel and then put the greens back in. That way it'll absorb excess moisture. You can't really do that with the bags, um, so I would suggest with the bags, removing them and wrapping them in a towel. It's the best way to store them and it'll keep them fresh longer. Broccoli and cauliflower. So we usually get our broccoli cauliflower in bulk and bring them home in a bag, um, but sometimes they come wrapped in plastic as well. So what we've learned to do is actually transfer them to a sealable bag. We don't seal it all the way, we keep the ends open so it can breathe. Um, but transfer it to a bag and put in, again, paper towel or regular towel and that will absorb excess moisture and it'll keep fresher longer in here. It is a little bit more clunkier in the fridge, um, but it is definitely worth it. It'll keep their crisp um, texture and they'll stay fresher longer. So I used to just throw my ginger straight up in the drawer and um, it would always, it was susceptible to getting dry and moldy and it just wasn't ideal. Um, so what I learned actually is when you get your ginger, dry it, just wipe it down with a towel, pat it down with a towel and actually put it into a sealable container. Um, and if you cut your ginger, just make sure to pat the area that you cut to absorb any excess moisture and put it back in the container. It'll stay fresher longer in here and um, yeah. <laughs> so berries are very finicky and they can definitely mold very fast in the fridge. I've learned from experience and I've wasted a lot of berries and they're quite expensive so I wanted to try to figure out a way to best preserve them. So I was talking to my mom and she actually recommended that I do a vinegar bath. So I looked it up online and basically if you wash berries in a vinegar and water solution, um, it's not that much vinegar, you don't want to put too much because it will become very vinegary in taste, uh, but it's a very dilute solution. You soak the berries for at least five minutes, then you'll rinse them off in a colander, and then I actually transfer them to a container with a towel, because like I've been saying throughout this whole video, the towel will absorb any excess moisture and will keep the fruit fresher longer, and it'll prevent it from um, getting moldy. And I actually have a cover for this, but I don't seal it all the way because you don't want to lock in the moisture. So I just place it right on top, it has enough aeration, and it'll be good to go. You can also keep this in the container that it came in um, because that does have enough holes to keep it aerated in there, but I would suggest lining it with a towel or a paper towel just to absorb that moisture. Now on to mushrooms. So if you buy mushrooms in the cardboard container, just keep them in the container and you could prick a few holes on top as well just to keep the air flowing through there. Um, but if you buy your mushrooms in bulk, don't transfer them to a plastic bag 
or a like sealable Ziploc bag. Um, it's actually ideal to keep them in a similar setting as they would be in that cardboard container uh, because this will absorb excess moisture and it will also just keep them fresh and from getting slimy, if you know what I mean. So I actually have a cloth reusable bag that um, we grocery shop with and I just keep the mushrooms in here in the fridge um, and I'll just put this straight in the fridge and then once we use up all the mushrooms, I'll just wash this bag. I just hand wash it and let it air dry. But if you don't have a bag like this, you can also put this in a container lined with a towel. And it's recommended that you cover it with plastic wrap, but I'm trying not to use that. So what you can do, do is just put the towel on top of the mushrooms. And again, it'll absorb any excess moisture. So we did start keeping some of our fruits in the refrigerator. Citrus is actually ideal within the refrigerator because when you let it sit out at room temperature, it'll start to dry out. Um, so I learned this because we had a bunch of limes. We In our imperfect produce box, a bunch of limes came. We didn't use them all and they started to get really hard. And I was like, this is weird. There wasn't that much liquid uh, or juice in the inside anymore. And it's because as they sit out, they start drying out. So it's ideal to keep them in a cool, area, the refrigerator is best, and um, citrus is actually ideal when it's enjoyed at room temperature. So I would just suggest removing it from the fridge, letting it come to room temperature before using it or juicing it or whatever you're going to do. So it's actually best to store apples in the refrigerator as well. If you let them sit out, they start to get soft and like not as enjoyable. And so again, I just keep them in the fridge, remove them, and let them come to room temperature before I enjoy them. My teeth are very sensitive to cold things, um, so I don't really like enjoying fruit straight out of the fridge. So I just let it come to room temperature or leave it out um, and then just enjoy it later in the day. In terms of your crisper drawers, it is not ideal to store your fruits and vegetables together in the same drawer. So fruit actually emits ethylene, which is a ripening agent, and it'll actually cause your vegetables to spoil faster. Um, so it's just ideal to keep them separated so that they are both happy and they both stay fresh longer. And speaking of ethylene gas, because the fruits are emitting that, it is best to keep the fruit drawer at low humidity. Um, I didn't know anything about the humidity drawers until we got our new refrigerator. I just started doing so much research on the fridge and like reading more. I like, actually read the manual online. And um, so it is best to keep fruit at a low humidity setting and that will actually let the gas escape and it'll keep the fruit fresher longer. And for the vegetables, it's actually ideal to keep those at a high humidity setting um, because that is the ideal setting for them to stay fresh in. So, so a good rule of thumb is to use the low humidity settings for things that spoil and use the high humidity settings for things that wilt. So it's mostly fruits versus vegetables. There can be some um, overlap there, but because we like to keep our fruits and vegetables separated, we just keep one at low and one at high. Another way that you can prevent spoilage with the fruits and vegetables in your crisper drawers is to actually try not to pack them to the brim. When they are really full, that prevents airflow and it'll actually make your produce spoil faster. So a good rule of thumb is just to let them become about three quarters of the way full. And this has been helping us because it prevents us from buying too much as well. And um, it just helps us use up more of our fruits and vegetables. I hope these help you guys. I don't know if this is like a video that everyone's gonna love, but I was, I just feel very geeky about this stuff. I was super excited when I learned all of these hacks, these tips and tricks, and they've definitely been helping us in wasting less and um, preserving our fruits and vegetables so they're more enjoyable when we do eat them. So if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, let us know what you thought about it in the comments below. Hit that bell if you want notifications for all our new videos, and I'll see you soon. Bye.